Mr. McGrath, you'd rather be next. I am. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Uh, no more pointing to other people <laughs> in the room. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to come before the board. My name is Lee McGrath. I'm a legislative counsel for the Institute for Justice. Uh, Renee works in our headquarters in Arlington, Virginia. I run the Minnesota office, as well as I'm responsible for the legislative, across the country, the legislative uh, activities. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the proposed rules about braiding. And if I could, I'll, I can give you the suggestions that I, uh, that I have that you, uh, the things that I recommend that you consider taking, taking out of these proposed uh, rule, uh, rules. The one thing in common that threading and braiding have is that we view the, the our advocacy is not against the core part of the of a of a of the cosmetology world. It is not against your licensing of cosmetologists. Instead, we look at what's happening at the margin, what's happening with these niche. Uh, niche, niche occupations like threading. In Minnesota, we had a, uh, where I live, a, a healthy debate about eyelash extensions, about uh, about braiding. So this is not a challenge. These challenges that we're raising are not a challenge to the bread and butter of what this board is responsible for doing. It is a in our advocacy ask you to think about the burdens that you're pl placing on niche, provide, niche providers, braiders, and, and thre uh, threaders. I trust I won't have to come back to talk about eyelash extend extenders, but I'm experienced in that as, as well. My proposal today in, these, uh, in the documents that I've handed out are to delete the references to braiders. This is unnecessary. I suggest to you that this is unnecessary, that it be included in the rules. So on the first page, you can see my, in the right-hand column, my scribbling delete proposed wording. Uh, wording. And uh, this has to deal with uh, section 1105, the alternative hair design, in which you are require, you're proposing a requirement that it uh, be done in um, facilities licensed by the board. On the second page, you can see the same thing in the context of the uh, uh, of current rules. That's why I numbered that page 1A. The second change is in the definition in section 301 of the curriculum for cosmet cosmetologists. And my suggestion to the board is that it remove the proposed addition of alternative hair design for your for the 1,500 uh, hours uh, th that are required to become a licensed cosmetologist. And then on page 2A2, a couple pages back, you can see where that change fits into the context of existing laws. But the basic message to you that I'd offer, suggest to the board, is to distinguish core, the core things that you want to regulate. You want to regulate cosmetologists and distinguish them from braiders because it is very different. So my, I offer four reasons why you should accept my suggestion and, uh, and, and and delete these two proposed rules. The first is that you should treat like things alike and, dis and dissimilar things dissimilarly. This is a, said in less legalese, what that means is don't mix apples and oranges. That, that cosmetology is, a, is an apple, braiding is an oranges, or oranges, these are two different functions, and these proposed rules tend to treat dissimilar things similarly, and that is a, is, is a mistake. Uh, cosmetology, hairdressing, as it's called in the statute, is not equal to braiding. It, they are different. They are different in curriculum. 
They are different in skills, clients, practitioners, history, culture, texture, and, and styles. If that were not enough, they are different in the use of chemicals, dyes, and, and straighteners. Cosmetology presents some dangers as it relates to the use of chemicals, dyes, and, and straighteners. Grading does not. Grading is safe. And you, in fact, the, the legislators here in Louisiana, and you, on the, your predecessors on the board, recognize this difference. You call braiding alternative hair styling. You are, re by the very, your own words, alternative. You are distinguishing braiding from hair, <coughs> hair, hair styling. Don't treat like things don't treat dissimilar things similarly. Secondly, my second reason, this rule is unnecessary, and it is an unnecessary uh, necessary burden. I would be interested uh, to perhaps uh, uh, engage you in understanding what evidence you have found for the need for this rule. Um, because certainly, it burdens the economics of a standalone braiding uh, salon. It puts costs on, on the, those salons by having to hire a, a manager to supervise the, the braiders. And I would submit <coughs> that it burdens the very people who you want to support, the 45 or 47 uh, licensees, and it certainly burdens the many, many scores of, of braiders who are not part of your uh, uh, re regime, potentially putting them all out of, out of business or at least reducing the profitability of their organizations. It is also a cultural burden that you're, and besides economics, it is also a cultural one in that the managers may not likely know what hair braiding uh, is. They may not know the, uh, <clears throat> what, uh, any health and safety issues, and I respectfully submit that it is culturally condescending. The third reason is that this proposal is going in the wrong direction. Louisiana is one of the outliers. With 500 hours, it is second only to Oklahoma in terms of the burdens that it places on hair, hair braiders. By contrast, 23 other states have exempted hair braiders, and there is not an epidemic in those 23 three other states. In fact, all you have to do is look across the border at Mississippi and see the success that braiders are having in, in Mississippi, whereas the, whereas, you, <clears throat> whereas the state licenses fewer than 50 braiders here in Louisiana, more than 20 times the number of braiders are working in, in mi Mississippi, all safely, all earning a, a living, all providing for their, their families, all creating jobs, all training young uh, braiders in their, their work. Mississippi is a success, the regime here not so much, given the, number, given the fact that there are more African Americans in Louisiana than there are in Mississippi and more potential clients uh, than in, in Mississippi. Finally, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, members, the world has changed since 2003 when you enacted this legislation. And Ms. Morris knows of the North Carolina Dental Board case, a case that, was in, that involves the, the, uh, the Dental Board in North Carolina engaging in an expansion of, of powers delegated to, uh, ambiguously delegated to the, to the board 
by, by the North Carolina State Legislature. It is now <coughs> fair game for antitrust lawyers, and the, the Institute for Justice does not engage in antitrust litigation. But this type of mission expansion beyond your core competency is at the heart of the North Carolina Dental Board, uh, Board case. It is clear that the practice of cosmic, that the powers issued to you to issue special permits relates, relate to the practice of cosmetology. And cosmetology relates to the practice of hair dressing, but it doesn't relate to the practice of, of braiding. So I submit the legitimacy to continue to regulate hair braiders should be a, something of your concern given the, the landmark case of North Carolina Dental Board versus the Federal Trade Commission. With that, Mr. Chairman and, and members, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions about what the Institute for Justice is, the fact that we have been representing braiders for over 20, 20 years, and, and, and why we're here. I have one, I'm curious about one thing you mentioned. Yes, sir. The dentistry case, and I'm not familiar with right. it. What, 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 did they, what did the dental board start to regulate? So the dental board was made up of dentists. They may have one, had one public member, and they chose to, to regulate teeth whiteners. So there were approximately 50 teeth white whiteners at the margin of the price, at the margin, this is a, the similarities are clear. In my eyes, are clear that you have an occupation at the margin of the practice, practice act. The dental board <coughs> did not receive any complaints from customers. It received, the North Carolina Dental Board received complaints from other dentists because the, uh, the teeth whiteners went in to the malls, opened kiosks, and helped uh, customers apply the teeth whitening them, themselves. They used they used over-the-counter uh, teeth white. So it was perfectly safe. And it wasn't some crazy libertarian, uh, libertarian public interest uh, law firm out of Washington, D.C. It was the Federal Trade Commission that raised this case about the scope of power that the North Carolina Dental Board uh, case uh, had and, uh, the and the decision by the Supreme Court I can go on, but stop me. All right, the decision by the United States Supreme Court was that the board members themselves in North Carolina uh, were personally exposed to damages. One more question. Um, yes. Do you know, and I know you're not a cosmetologist or a braider, you're an attorney, but um, do you know if braiders ever use scissors in the course of doing their work? I do. They do. They trim, they trim, the ends uh, of, uh, of, of the hair that they, they do. And so the definition uh, that was put before the legislature last year uh, allowed for the use of scissors as an incidental part of braiding. So, so then are you saying then that trimming is not a part of hairdressing or cosmetology? Is that what you're, is that what you're? No, I'm saying that, braid, that it is only incidental to, to, to braiding. I respect that the trimming is the core, the core. The, the differences are that the core of, of hairdressing and cosmetology is the cutting of, cutting of hair, whereas it is only incidental to, to braiding. But, but you, and, and you did say that braiders do trim hair. I do, okay. I did, and okay. I do. Okay. <clears throat> My pleasure. Other other questions? I just have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, how did they get a license, braiders? Well, very great. So in in Mississippi, I can start with Mississippi, and then I can go to the other other generally to the other states. Let's just stick to one state. Oh, let's stick with Mississippi. <laughs> so in, in in Mississippi, there is a re, uh, a registration. Melanie Armstrong. Two below Mississippi, 100 Main Street, two below Mississippi. Then in Mississippi, Miss Armstrong 
has to take a self-test dealing with health and safety. Page one asks her, her questions about sanitation, washing her hair, identifying lice. It may include something about uh, uh, traction allopation. I'm not sure about that. But then on the back side of that, uh, that one page are the answers. And the braiders in, in Mississippi take the test. And then they must put, have on site, that, that exam at their, work, their, their workstation. And so what they have is they have a way in which to identify general health and safety issues. And the interesting thing, the interesting thing is that there have been no complaints about, about health and safety issues among the 1,200 braiders who were registered by the state of Mississippi. And that question again. Where do they receive a license? They, re they don't have a license in Mississippi. They have a registration from the Mississippi, Mississippi Board of Cosmetology. Which are so they're getting it from the Cosmetology Board of Mississippi. That's right. Registration. Okay. Thanks. Now, in other states, last year, uh, just to mention three, uh, uh, Indiana, New Hampshire, and South Dakota exempted completely braiders from their cosmetology uh, uh, statutes. And so there, they, there, is, uh, there is no license, there is no re re registration. So there, and of the 24 states, more of them look like those three than they do from then uh, <coughs> Mississippi, which has the simple registration and self-test. Self did, did I answer your question? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. My pleasure. Thank you very much.